Welcome back. Uh, right now, we're going to our first hot topic, and that is about doctors that now are asking for an increment in their salaries. It used to be 200% uh, the way um, they were asking for. Now it's 550% salary increase, and they're threatening or they're threatening a strike action after two weeks from the 5th of July. 2023 so they had already given um, had a warning strike five-day warning strike and then there was a time that they gave to government that time has elapsed and the government still according to them did not do anything now they're giving the government another two weeks beginning from the 5th of July otherwise they're going to go on strike and what they're asking for like I said is 550 percent salary increase well we are being joined by dr. Nana uh, Fayo Ole, uh, who will be talking with us on uh, these issues that the National Association of Resident Doctors have raised. Good morning and welcome to the show, Doctor. Good morning. Okay. Thank you for having me. Yes. 550% uh, salary increase. Uh, before we go into whether that is possible or not, what are really the issues? Let's hear from the horse's mouth why this agitation is coming up at this time. Okay. Um, thank you again. Um, and thank to our viewers out there. Um, as we all know, these are recurrent issues. And just as you recounted, um, uh, last month, um, the month of uh, May, we went on one five-day warning strike on the 17th, and on the 19th we had a consultatory meeting um, headed by the then Honorable Minister of Health, Honorable uh, Minister of Labour and Employment, and Honorable His, His Excellency and uh, Dr. Chris Ngige, and when a memorandum of understanding was signed, and this was based on. Some of the demands that we um, raised, and there were timelines put to them. But unfortunately, as we speak, and um, this is about eight weeks down the line, nothing had changed from um, what um, was signed. And government had completely reneged um, on its um, commitment um, towards um, the, our members, and our clear that is not fair. And that is the reason why we met again um, on the fifth of July to reappraise. Um, the issues that were raised, and it was clear to us that nothing has changed from where we left off um, eight weeks ago, and so we had no um, choice than to reissue and refresh a ultimatum, hoping that government will probably um, do the need for it now. What were, what were in this document, this memorandum of understanding you had with the government, what are the things that they agreed to, that they reneged on? Uh, well, they agreed on a couple of things um, based on our demand, and some of which um, and, and involved um, outstanding areas, skipping from skipping areas from 2014 to 2016, um, uh, areas of salaries, consequential adjustments of um, minimum wage, as well as hazard allowance of our members who have been um, omitted, and also a circular and one for one replacement of. Um, um, clinical staff, essentially doctors and nurses um, who are left um, in the system because of the death of the manpower and because of the brain drain that is no need to um, anybody in this country um, now. And then we also spoke about the fact that um, our, so our certificate has been downgraded by Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria and those ones are things that really do not need any commitment other than um, a financial commitment other than to sit down and then address some of these things and also an uh, implementation of a 200 um, percent uh, adjustment review of the comments um, salary structure um, just to take us back to where we were when this um, comments was um, 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 implemented um, um, some 10 years ago and we had to do all of this and we, we, without getting any response as of well today. Okay, so the last, correct me if I'm wrong, but the last time you spoke with a government official, it was Chris Ngege of the former administration, right? Mm. Yes, you're correct. Has there been any attempt by this government to speak with you or by your association to speak with this government directly? 
aside from the strikes? Yeah, thank you. We have made um, e frantic efforts at uh, meeting the current um, government officials. We've been in Abuja on president and and the secretary and other uh, NOC members have been in Abuja on countless number of times and uh, um, making an attempt to see government officials in order to address this issue. But of, of course, we met with gridlocks and even the initial uh, contact we had actually not going through it again. We understand, we can't understand why that is on, um, what is happening, and because um, of the fact that we had the warning strike because be proud to the inauguration of this current um, um, administration and that was enough um, sensitization and we also appraised this at our May OGM where we also uh, pleaded with the government that we are also sharing because we're supposed to make decisions from that May OGM that was um, hosted by um, Lipgas University in you know, speech we're supposed to make um, a, a concrete decision but we are we appeal with our, to our members that we should share um, uh, all our grievances and give this government some ample time to look into the issue. But then, unfortunately, um, we we didn't get any response that we that we that we actually looked for. Well, how would you respond to uh, a suggestion by some Nigerians that perhaps your association should wait? for this administration to announce its ministers. And then you channel your grievances through the minister for a more proper and official discussion that will be more fruitful as against just striking and seeming to be beating the air. Well, uh, yeah, it is easier um, said than done. And I think um, this struggle is just not about us. I think it's about um, um, the common man in the street, and, and, and this is the reality in our teaching hospital now, uh, our hospital is that we have this problem and it's getting worse by the day. Um, patients haven't gotten to wait for hours, surgeries haven't been cancelled, and a whole lot of these things are taking up on health workers, the nurses, the doctors, who are, who are seen as being, um, not doing their job, whereas People are burnt out, and these are the issues. And currently, we really know that uh, the, the fact of the matter is that we still having the same government taking over from the same government. So the issues are not new. The brain drain is not new. All of them, all the major candidates are the during the electoral campaign campaign with it the, with the fact that they want to address the death of uh, brain drain and the health sector of especially of clinical staff. And I think. Um, that enough should also have spawned them because if they are prioritized health, like in education health, if those are prioritized, I think um, a very sensitive government will probably pay um, adequate attention to, to health. And in fact, the last consultatory uh, meeting that was held, um, that was headed by the then Honorable Minister of Labor and Employment, all the permanent secretaries of the um, uh, major concerned uh, ministries we're in attendance, so those are the that, those are the most senior uh, civil servants, and they are still there. They never left, so they are still there. It's not as if they had. So whoever is interfacing the current government with us can go through the permanent sectors and get this sorted. Okay, but five hundred and fifty percent is quite a lump sum. Uh, we know how uh, Nigerians cried when there was a rumor that members of the National Assembly were asking for 114 percent. Yes, we understand that politicians get a lot of money, more than a lot of uh, civil servants, yes, but 550 percent for just workers. When the national minimum wage of 30 percent, uh, of 30,000 Naira, has not been paid by a lot of states, and even the federal government is struggling to pay the minimum wage, workers now are asking for 200 percent, and then or 200,000 as a minimum wage, and uh, the um, health workers are asking for 550 percent, which will run to a lot of money. Uh, how do you think that is realizable? Is that not really uh, demanding without a, a human face? Well, uh, thank you so much. Um, if you had followed our argument um, over this issue, We've been very scientific about it. I would just, we don't just throw figures out without um, putting it through some um, rigor in terms of uh, trying to assess the situation. 
and our assessment, even as of the time we made the request as of July 7, 2022, we run the numbers and the, the variables that we, we used were um, the, the forest exchange, the, the PMS um, rate as of the time, the, about 10 years ago when this implementation was done, um, the inflation rate, and so many others. And eventually, when the subsidy was removed, it, it further indicated us that it took us to something over 550% um, um, increment or what would even take us to where we were 10 years ago. But then, if you read the communique very well, we still maintain, we, we, we are very organized, we don't flip flop with our demands. We still maintain that what we demand from government is still a minimum of 200% and not um, 550%. We just had that as a preamble that if, when we run the figure, Following the removal of subsidy, it took us to something over 550 percent. Mm. All right. So, a few days from now, you're going to embark on this strike. How long will this strike be this time? Any idea? Well, we, we do not. Uh, we are not strike mongers. The reason why we're doing it, we have given countless and repeated um, ultimatum. And the reason why we're doing this is just to give ample time. Let government come to the table and let us have a discussion around this. We, if we can solve this, these are things that can be sorted within the next, with the time given as a fortunate of one for one replacement. The committee, the committee, the president committee on braiding had concluded a sitting as, of, as far back as February. The head of service was supposed to release a circular to all the various institutions so that they can start taking up and replacing those that are leaving the system to prevent um, the worsening of brain um, um, burnout. But then, this hasn't been done, doesn't need any, anything. It just has been concluded, the report has been submitted, issued circular to it, it hasn't been done. So we're not looking up for us to go on strike if government does the need to. But if they don't, then we may not be, we may be left with no choice, guided by our, our neck, in taking a decision. So I will not um, um, be able to say what exactly the decision of NEC would be. And that will be in the next two weeks. Okay, uh, in the next two weeks. Uh, but like she was asking, we would have loved to know if it's going to be an indefinite strike or it's also going to be a two-week strike or another warning strike and all that. At least when it has a name, we know uh, how long it might stay and what alternatives Nigerians will have. But you doing essential duties, uh, one would expect that there will be less strikes and all that. Um, don't you have any other option? Must it be a strike? Have you explored all other op options and what were there if it will now come back to, be, uh, to a strike? Thank you again. Unfortunately, we had always, we're open to negotiation, we're open to discussion, and we're always available. Thank you. But unfortunately, uh, we have only have. Oh, well, Some technical glitch. Yes. Government, right? Yeah, just wrap it up. Let's let's just wrap it up. It would appear that the more use that they signed on engagement with um, option. We really do not. Help. Can you hear me? Yes. Just wrap up. Hello? Just wrap up. Yes. Okay, uh, just as we've said, we, we, we have been called essential worker, but we're not being given the preference that such um, appellation deserves, and that is very worrisome. Even recently, I was reading, uh, reading currently uh, that the US, US um, uh, Canada, they are also further softening, they are, they, they are making it more easy, um, easier rather, for doctors and nurses and other clinical staff to even come to the system. And we'll talk about the push and push, push um, uh, uh, issues. And if you are making it even difficult to even get the most basic needs, then you have and the people that are at the receiving end of this brain drain are also making things easier for, for the clinical staff to come. It makes, it, it, it gives us a whole lot of worry because um, we just don't um, place head right in this country. Well, uh, Dr. Fayewale, we do hope that the government will respond positively to your demands and uh, we find a solution because we can't bear to not have doctors be around mm. to take care of us. It's too essential. It's too critical.
to have you uh, leave the scene. We do hope that you will find solutions to this or the government will meet your demands. And we hope that you two uh, will meet them halfway at least so that uh, it can be practicable enough to find solutions to whatever your demands And we do hope be. that it's not just going to be about their salary increase, but mm. a total, a holistic Overhaul turnaround the in the system. health system. Yes. Because it is really very depressing to go to hospitals and see Nigerians lying on the bare floor, mm -hmm. sick Nigerians in need of immediate health attention. Some so, of them being turned back even. No, no space even on the corridor yeah. for them so to Yeah, so these are some of the things that we hope to see change as you get the needed attention in that sector. Mm. Thank you so much, Thank Dr. Fayole, for your time. Thank you for having me. Okay, Dr. Nana Fayole uh, is the Deputy Editor of National Association of Resident Doctors, NAD. So we'll take a short break and when we return, we'll continue with other issues. Stay with us.